Welcome! In this series of videos, we will cover the design and implementation of a project, from initial design through coding and development to testing, using the PowerBasic, Windows and Console compilers. Today we will continue our project to look at the use of blockchains within PowerBasic by creating an application to be used on each node for communication. Every application should begin with some planning. What will be the parts of the application and what will they do? Multiple nodes. Our application needs to cope with multiple nodes, each of which is a computer becoming active for a while and then deactivating. Thread-based UDP communication. This will be running in one or more threads and communicating via UDP, that is User Datagram Protocol. Raising transactions against other nodes. We want to raise transactions against other nodes in the network to exchange data. And we want to use a blockchain to record and maintain an audit trail of the transactions that have been made. Let's now have a look at some code. We will start off our application by basing it on one of our code templates. We will pick the demo code template. And I'm going to include the common display library. As I want this application to be functional, either to be compiled under the console compiler or the Windows compiler. In this video, we're going to concentrate on creating the peer-to-peer -peer networking. As our application is going to be running on many computers, the application should be able to communicate with any other computer on the same network. So we're going to set up a few basic things to allow us to keep track of all of that. I'm going to create a couple of constants, one called max nodes and one called loop limit. The maximum nodes constant is to allow us to give a total number of nodes that the application will allow to peer-to-peer -peer communicate. We can always increase this one later, should the number be too small. The loop limit will limit the number of transactions that the application will accept within one particular listening time. We'll cover more about that when we get to that point in the code. Each computer in the application, each node is going to keep track of all the other nodes that are in the network. And I'm going to store that in a global array. This global array is going to be an array of user-defined types. I'm calling the user-defined type UDT nodes. It at the moment has two elements to it. The work name, which is going to be the name of the computer node, and the condition of that node and the condition is going to be an enumeration. It's either going to be active or not active. And there are two further global variables I'm going to create. One for a global thread handle for our monitor and one for a flag to determine whether the thread which we're about to create is ending or not. I'll explain more about these as we get to them. So now we've got a title for our application the title being Blockchain Demo. The first thing I want to do in this PB main function is to set the random number generator, as we're going to be using that later on. And before we create our thread, which will do most of the work, I want to prepare the node array. This is a global array that will be keeping track of all the other nodes in the network. So we'll declare a simple function called prep node array. This is a very short function. It takes no parameters. It is redimensioning the nodes array from 1 to the maximum number of nodes, currently 500. And then for each of those nodes, it's stepping through each element in the array to set the work name to be a zero in string and the condition to be not active. We're using the prefix command here to save a little bit of typing. And this function will return true. Now that we have that set up, the next thing I want to do 
is to create the thread, which is going to do all of the work. And for that, we'll be using the PowerBasic thread create command. And we're calling our function monitor thread. And we're passing the handle that comes from that creation to the global each monitor. We'll cover the creation of this thread in a moment, but I'd like to just finish off what's going to happen within the PB main function first. Having created the threaded function, which will then start running, I want the application to wait for 30 seconds to allow the application to bed in before it allows the user the option of exiting. So we're simply going to put a sleep command in here. And then we'll call the standard fun wait command, which will effectively terminate our application. After that, we need to close down this node. We're calling a new function called deactivate this node, which will send a broadcast message out to all the other computers on the network to let them know that this computer is closing down. It will then set the global variable long ending to true. This is monitored by our thread and this will terminate the thread. We will then sleep for one second and the application will terminate. So we have two functions to actually create now, the thread function and the deactivate this node function. We'll start off with the monitor thread function. As I said before, the monitor thread function will be doing most of the work within this application. Within this function, we're going to be calling some standard UDP open and close functions. So I'm going to create another library which we can use to do this. Before we do that though, we'll save the application to disk. And we're going to create a library called blockchainudp.include. It itself has three global setup and a constant, which will be the port number for our UDP activities. We'll be creating some general functions in here, which we'll create as we get to them. But for the moment, we'll go back to the beginning of our application and we'll add this as another library. So when this function runs for the first time, one of our first tasks will be to open a UDP port. In the unlikely event that we're unable to open one of these ports, we can put a message out to our console. If we do manage to open the port successfully, we'll put a message out to our console to say that our listener has now been created. So this is calling a function called UDP open port. This is going to be in our new UDP library. So I've created two standard functions in here, one to open the port and one to close the port. These are making use of the inbuilt command in PowerBasic for host address. This takes the address of the host and translates it into an IP number. We're then opening a file, just like you would open a file on disk, using the free file command. And using UDP open, we're opening the port, which is our constant, which is 16,030. This number is purely arbitrary. And it's opening as our file handle. I'm setting the timeout on this to be 10 seconds. That's 10,000 milliseconds. This short timer is used by the send and receive commands. If they receive no response within 10 seconds, then they will time out. And our error variable will actually be set. The computer will then beep and this function will exit. Otherwise, we will return the value true. There is also a UDP close port functions. As the application will only open the port when it runs initially, the port will stay open for the duration of this session. Once the application is closing down, then the UDP port can be closed. So this handles the first part of creating the open port so we can start doing things with it. Next, there's going to be a loop. We want to continue within this thread until we receive the flag to say that we're closing down. So this is going to be a do loop. So we're going to do until this variable becomes true. 
Within Nizzleup, we're going to handle all the UDP communications. What we want each node to do as soon as it starts up is to broadcast to the rest of the network who it is. So we're going to create a function called broadcast who I am. It will do this initially at the beginning of the loop. This will tell all the other nodes that this particular computer, this node, is now active. The next thing to do in our loop is to list off a list of all the active nodes. This function is not strictly necessary for the running of this application, but since we'll be sitting watching it, it's very useful to see which nodes are currently active by looking at the list output by each of the nodes themselves. Since the purpose of this application is to allow multiple nodes to communicate with each other and to send transactions. So we're going to create a dummy transaction. And all this transaction is going to be at the moment is a string saying demo transaction. And our function to actually raise this transaction on the network is going to be called by this new raise transaction routine. Taking the single parameter of the transaction string. So we will set some local variables at the top of our function. So having got that out of the way, we now have to look to see what messages are coming in from the other active nodes. This will allow us to add it on to our global node list, the array we spoke about earlier. So we're going to do this in a loop, and we're going to use the loop limit constant we set up at the beginning of the program to limit this initially to 10. So this will be a for next loop. And within this for next loop, we're going to call another new function called UDP who is active. This will return a message from any node which is sending us a message. We're going to create all of these functions shortly. So if the message we get back from the nodes is not a blank message, then we will display this on our screen. And we'll display that using the standard fun log command. Now you may wonder why the message coming back from an active node would effectively be blank. We're going to use the UDP command to send messages that broadcast to all nodes on our local network. So when these messages are received, then the node we're on now, which happens to be a computer called Octo002, we would also receive this one back at Octo002. So I'm going to set up the UDP who is active function to blank out any messages that are coming from the computer that's currently running this application. Therefore, the messages we get back will always be from a computer other than the one that this function is currently running on. So having received a message, we have to decide what we want to do with it. The message itself is going to be formulated in several parts. So we will come back to this section later once we've created the messages themselves. So we will close off the for next loop. And after we drop out the loop, we want to put the computer to sleep for 10 seconds. Again, this is completely arbitrary, but it will actually simulate the computer doing something else for 10 seconds before it starts to listen for any more messages. So the loop will continue until such times as we have received the ending flag. The long ending variable will be true. And at that point, we will call the UDP close port command to close it down. So we have a few functions to create now to get this to work. We'll start off with the broadcast who I am function. And we'll create that within our library. I'm going to create two local variables here. The first one, str broadcast, is going to be a string. It will be the IP address to broadcast to. And the second will be that IP address as a number. So we will first send a message out to our log to say that broadcasting is now active. And we're then going to set the broadcast IP address to 192.168.0.255. Setting this as 255 will ensure this is broadcast out to all the computers on the local network. This will ensure they all receive the message. And we're going to use the host address command to turn this IP address into a number. And then the final command within this function 
is to call UDP send. This UDP send command is going to send to the port which we've already opened. And it's going to use the IP address, this one here, to send to. It's going to use the port number we defined at the beginning of this library. And it's going to send two pieces of information. It's going to call a function to return the computer name that we're currently running on. It's then going to send a pipe command and then this string of characters. And we're using this to tell all the other nodes that this computer is currently active. So we will create that function to return the computer name, which is using the inbuilt environ dollar command with a parameter of computer name. This very easily returns the name of the computer we're currently running on. So this will send to the network to say that this computer is now active. So the next thing to do is to list the active nodes. This function takes no parameters. And all we're going to do is to quite simply step through each of the elements of the nodes array, pulling out whether it's active or not. So we're going to use a local variable to allow us to go through a for next loop. And within that for next loop, we're going to use an if condition. We're testing the element condition of each of the elements in the array. And if it's equal to active, then we're pushing a message out to a log to give us the work name trimmed down of the computer which is currently active. And just for a little more clarity, if we're in the console window on the console compiler, I'm going to change the color of the text that will appear on the console. And then turn it back to the standard green at the end. The if def command actually checks to see whether the constant pbcc32 has been defined or not. If it's been defined, PowerBasic will know that we're actually compiling under the console application as opposed to the Windows application. If you are compiling under the Windows application, this piece of code will be completely ignored. This allows you to write code that can be compiled in either the Windows compiler or the console compiler. So now we've completed the second function, let's go on to the raise transaction function now. This function takes a single parameter, which are the details of the transaction itself. We're only going to put a skeleton of this transaction in here this time. We'll pad this out in a later video. This, as we did before, is sending a message out using the UDP send command. So it's using exactly the same logic to send this out. So we're using the UDP send command to send it to the broadcast IP address three bits of information pipe delimited. First of all, the computer name we're sending from, the string transaction, and then the transaction details themselves. And then we're ending the function. So the next function to create is the deactivate this node function. So this, as you will see, is remarkably similar to the previous function. It's sending a string using UDP send out to the network. And in this case, it's sending the computer name followed by not active. This will allow all the other nodes to update their record to say that this particular node has closed down. Our next function is to create the UDP who is active function. This again is going to be very similar. We're putting a message out to a log to say that we're polling four nodes. We're then setting the broadcast IP address as we've done several times before. We're clearing the error just in case there's any errors lying around. And we're then using a UDP receive command. This will attempt to listen on the broadcast IP address. It will then pick up which port it receives something from. It will store the data in the buffer variable. It will then look to see if the first element of the buffer, the limited by the pipe, is this computer. If it's this computer, then we're going to ignore it because it's one of our own broadcasts. Otherwise, we're going to return the value of what's in the buffer variable. And that's all the functions set up for our peer-to-peer -peer network. Now all we have to do is to test it. The plan for our testing is to, first of all, compile the application. And the compile works quite cleanly. 
We're now going to take this blockchain demo executable and we're going to copy it to a number of other computers. We can then run the application on each computer. And what should happen is that when this application runs on each computer, it will start up the monitor thread. The monitor thread will open a UDP channel. It will then broadcast its computer name to the rest of the network. It will then listen for any active nodes. It will then attempt to raise a demo transaction and then run round in a loop from 1 to a value of 10. And it will listen to see which nodes are active. So now we can add the extra functionality in this part of the loop. When we receive a message, the message in the moment will have three possible values. The message will either be active to say that a node is active, it will be not active to say a node has ceased being active, or it will be a transaction. So we can handle each of these by creating a select case statement in here. So before we start our testing, we'll need to handle the condition when a node becomes active and when a node becomes not active. We have a global node array which we're going to need to populate for both of these transactions. So we're going to create a final function to allow us to update the node array. And we're going to call that function update node array, giving it two parameters. The actual message we have received, and in this case, active to say that we want to activate this node. And when we receive a not active message, we want to update the node array to say that the node is no longer active. So we can now create this new function, taking in its two parameters, the message being the first and the state of being the second, which is either going to be active or not active. So we're going to look through this array we have already dimensioned to see if we can find the computer name that's actually come in. So we will pick up the computer name using the parse command, as it's the first element in the delimited string in the message. And the delimiter is the pipe command. So the computer variable is now going to be populated with the name of the computer which is sent as this message. We'll put a message out to our log to say we're about to start updating the node array. And then it's a straightforward for next loop. Initially when we run this for the first time, the node array will be completely empty. So we'll want to know where to put this computer name. So if we find an empty slot in the array, we'll store that in the long empty variable. As we know this array starts at element 1, if long empty is 0 then it means we have not yet found an empty slot. So if the work name, the name of the computer, is currently blank, then we'll set our empty slot to be this one. This allows us to store the next available empty slot. We can then check the name of the computer in the array, and if it matches the computer we're trying to store, then the computer is already in the array. And if that's the case, then we merely have to test the state variable. If it's active, then we're setting the condition of this computer to be active. If it's not active, then we're setting the condition to be not active. And if we get to the end of the array and we still haven't found a computer, that means the computer is not in the array altogether. So we'll need to add it to the array and either mark it as active or inactive. So we're going to use the empty variable which points to the next empty slot in the array and we're setting the work name to be name of the computer. And then to finish off, we're testing the state again, marking active or not active. So we try a compile on our application now, and our application is now ready to run. So the next stage is to test the application by copying this executable onto several computers. However, although I hate ending a video on a cliffhanger, we're going to save the testing for the next video. That's it for today, thank you for watching.